Hello everyone, this is Melvia, welcome back to my channel. So today I am going to continue the search for a solo role playing games uh, that is perfect for people who, like myself, prefers gameplay over simple, uh, pure journal writing or storytelling. And the game that I want to talk about today is Ronin. So uh, for those of you who have watched my previous video a torch in the dark you know that um, there are three things that is very important to me when talking about solo role-playing games first of all will be the themes on the stories uh, the second part will be the gameplay itself whether there is actually a game mechanism rather than simple you know rolling a prompt and uh, writing in paragraphs and the most important thing will be the freedom of narrative creations how much you can have your input into the game, uh, creating your own world, uh, joining the thoughts and uh, stitching the stories together. And this game, similar to uh, A Torch in the Dark, is excellent in those three apartments. And first of all, first and foremost, this is a game that focuses on using gameplay mechanics to create a story. Uh, what you need to do is, uh, to play this game is very simple, all you need is 2d6 dices, preferably um, color-coded uh, differently, so uh, I think the best will be obviously black and white, um, and all you need is the PDF, or you can print it out, uh, I have printed it out and also uh, bind it together so that it becomes a, a little booklet. So um, if you want to know how to bind the book, you can easily search um, Perfect Binding uh, on YouTube, uh, or I will leave a link to, I think, the uh, Diner Table Gaming channel, which provides excellent um, uh, tutorials on how you can do it yourself. So very simple. Uh, and the last thing you need to do, have is obviously just a character sheet um, and your pencil and pay, uh, uh, erasers. Uh, that's all you need to play this game. And uh, this game is essentially where, where you are playing as a Ronin. Uh, for those of you who don't know what a Ronin is, it is a kind of samurai in the feudal Japan era. The samurais that actually lost their honors um, through multiple means, either they've lost their master uh, or they have done some deeds, um, maybe betrayed their master and were, you know, uh, driven out of the clan and so forth. Uh, for whatever reasons, these are the people who are basically drifting around in feudal Japan, uh, going through cities and cities, working sometimes as mercenaries, or sometimes they even fall into uh, banditry. And the aim of this game is that you are going to create your own rolling through rolling a, a number of tables so you can basically uh, get your name, you can be a male or female ones, you have your appearance, um, you have your uh, technique, basically these are the martial arts that you are using. So yes, you can see this, uh, this game that's come with some really nice um, arts. Uh, I think these are obviously inspired by a certain uh, Japanese anime. I'm not going to name it uh, for the same reasons that uh, the author mentioned, but anyway, I'm sure you will be able to tell simply from the cover. But anyway, uh, so you can pick your own technique, uh, you can decide your uh, character's background, you know, which family is coming from, you know, why you are actually a Ronin, for example, why you are you expelled, or you know, because your clan was destroyed by, by another clan and so forth. Um, you can get your scar, which is important, the meaning of the scar, 
I'm sure you will, if you have watched any uh, uh, anime, you will know that uh, your uh, uh, the, the main protagonist always has a, car, a scar or something. Uh, you will get your nightmare. Um, and then you basically have a crap character created because uh, simply by combining all these uh, details together, um, you have your own unique rolling. And the purpose of this game is that you are going around feudal Japan, uh, traveling to, to city, from cities to cities, um, you know, doing uh, city encounters or you know, journey uh, or journey encounters, until you get your reputation uh, high enough. Uh, face three different kinds of villains. So villains, obviously, um, you know, if you watch any anime or any uh, movies, there will always be a villains, starting from the, the the weak villains and then to the main villains. And again, these villains are all generated through rolling these tables. Uh, and once you have finished the final villain, then you will be uh, comparing all your scores together. So to see how uh, was your reputation, how honorable your Ronin is, and then it will determine the, uh, the end of the story. So in a way, this is very similar to the likes of uh, Four Against Darkness and D100 tables, where you are basically rolling on a couple of tables, um, and then some of them will basically ask you to roll on a, a follow-up table, and then you roll on that one. Uh, and you see what you encountered. The difference is, is that this game focuses on the story generations rather than a simple uh, dungeon crawl or over overland crawl experience. Because the difference is, is that this game allows you to, for example, talk to an NPC that you, you you've met. Uh, and for example, you're able to search for anything you want to search on your story. Uh, it could be a clue, it could be a specific item, and all you need to do is just roll a d6 to see what's the outcome, and you can generate a little bit of story based on that. And also, you are able to even talk to people as well, uh, any people, uh, in fact, not just um, uh, friendly people. You can even talk to your enemies and your villains, and there will be a, a simple uh, kind of like a oracle system that tells you you know what is his secret and also you know what is his uh, past information if he's telling you anything so you need to convince him uh, you need to basically uh, beat his uh, uh, a little test uh, before they will talk to you so in a way this is uh, a game that is um, very simple but at the same time it gives you a lot to to invest on um, the, uh, all the gameplay mechanisms is focused on allowing the players to generate story through rolling dice and uh, just tracking a couple of uh, uh, statistics. So there's no need for writing uh, a story or, or you know writing paragraphs of uh, of journal journals and so forth. So I'm gonna go straight into the gameplay, and uh, I have already created a character over here. So our character is called uh, Kentaro, and uh, uh, this is kind of a place that I think is uh, making the game less appealing to the Western audience, um, because of, obviously this is heavily themed as a Japanese game. So, um, I mean, this name doesn't really mean too much in, in English, but actually in uh, if you look into the, the Japanese meeting, meaning, it is actually there is a meaning to it. So this is the first son uh, of the uh, of the king uh, family, for example. Uh, and my appearance is that I use a mask, and uh, my technique is a uh, kenjutsu. So for those of you who don't know what a kenjutsu is, it's basically just a uh, of the common sword swordsman skills. And as you can see in the, in, a, in a booklet in front of me. There's actually tons of different uh, techniques, and they all have different gameplay mechanisms as well. So Kenjutsu is just temp, uh, just the normal katana wielding uh, uh, swordsman skills, which gives me two fight uh, bonus and also allows me to block two times. Uh, let's say if I have another uh, uh, techniques like the uh, Odachi. Odachi is quite 
basically the huge katana. Uh, what it will allow me to do is actually it will give you three fights and uh, one block instead. So you can see there are multiple different ways of you know getting these uh, techniques, and you can learn new techniques during your journey uh, if you if you're able to meet the allies who. Uh, who 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 knows these techniques and so they can teach you some of these and obviously your enemies will be using some of these techniques as well so some of them will um, uh, just happen to use the techniques that is uh, countering your your own techniques so lots of uh, tiny little stories that you can get simply from uh, looking at uh, who you're fighting and uh, who you're allying with uh, and I've also got a, uh, a family background. I am a samurai from an extinct uh, clan, which is uh, Akatora, which is a tiger clan. And uh, our clan is actually uh, destroyed by another clan, which is Shi uh, Osushi, which is a ox clan. And uh, they are in turn a vessel can, clan of a, of a larger clan. So you can see there's already quite a lot of stories simply by generating my uh, my little character here. Um, so I'm one of those that is um, working for an extinct clan. And uh, I've also got some scars and nightmare written. I have a long cut on the arm, which is my scar. And... Uh, it, I, it, it has its own meaning. It is uh, the meaning is duty. So I have a clear mission and know what to do. Uh, and actually, that fits quite well into the story because um, I can already tell straight away that I am one of those that uh, the last surviving members of the extinct clan, and probably my mission is to revenge, um, to take revenge on the Osushi clan. And the last thing I have is a recurring nightmare, which is a person laughing widely as blood runs down his face. So probably that is the villain that, or the final villain that we need to uh, face in this game. So uh, to start this game is pretty straightforward. Uh, all you need to do is to roll on your journey. So you start from you know, traveling from one place to another. Uh, so there are, it's just a straightforward D6 system. Uh, so let's just roll on that, uh, D6. So it's a three. Three is, uh, you have reached a port city. Here you can choose to have an urban encounter, table 14, or tick shelter to earn one determinations. Okay, so first of all, we already have a decision to make. I am actually going to um, do an urban encounter, which is table 14. So I'm going to roll on this one. So it's five and four. So five and four. A possible ally is being attacked by an enemy, which has a fight plus one and block zero in an alley. So first of all, we need to generate that uh, possible ally because that allows us to see uh, what they're doing and uh, you know what's their techniques, uh, what kind of occupations they are. So there is a quite a little uh, chapter here to show you how you can generate a possible ally. Uh, you can pick the gender. I'm gonna pick the male in this case. Again, you can roll the name. Uh, similar to generating your own character. Uh, so I'm going to roll on this one, so B, uh, 2d6s, 1 and 1. So 1 and 1 will be uh, Misukun. Misukun. So Misukun is our possible ally. Uh, and then what we need to do next is obviously look at the appearance and also the occupation. So appearance is again here, 2d6s. So it's three and three. So he is a uh, <laughs> with a dead face. So uh, Mizukun has a dead face. And what is he doing? What, what is his occupation? Let's see what his occupation. So there's a d6 table here. It's three. 
So he is a fighter. If he becomes an ally when you encounter a villain, this ally will appear and fight before you. If he defeats the uh, villain, he will abandon you and follow his own path. But he, if he's defeated, he will be dead. Oh, Misuku, Misuku, that face, Misuku. So um, I guess we will try to see if we can help him because um, you can see that. Uh, he was being attacked by an enemy with a fight plus one and block as zero in an alley. And that brings us to a good time to talk about uh, the fighting in this game. So this is actually a very simple game. Uh, you only need two dice and you roll them together and then you compare the two dices to see the attack. So you our attack will be the white dice and the enemy's ones will be the black dice and you add the bonus that you get from your technique and also um, you also have a block camp so basically if he loses uh, to the to, to the row then you minus one to your block and then you know by the time you get to zero then you have lost the fight uh, in this case our enemy is actually quite weak it's just a plus one enemy so we should be able to do it pretty well because uh, we have a fight of plus two so let's see okay so uh i have a six and the uh, enemy has a four i even get two plus so i actually get an eight and they have a five so easily i've won this fight um because the enemy doesn't have any blocks so i it only takes one hit to uh, to kill the enemy or defeat the enemy and um uh, in fact i can do some other um decisions as well uh the decision is whether i decided to kill this enemy because um depending on my my decision there will be different outcomes so if i decided to uh defeat him then i will lose a uh uh, uh a, comp uh, a compassion but uh, if I decided to let him go then I will gain a reputation and reputation is important in this game because the higher your reputation the easier um, the villains in this game will be able to find you so basically the higher you have a uh, reputation it's easy to roll on uh, you know the, the villains showing up um, so in this case I'm actually going to lose a compassion. I'm going to defeat and um, I'm going to kill this enemy because uh, well, it's just a, probably just a pawn. We don't even have a name for this enemy. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to just, uh, just defeat him. So, and uh, we start with two compassion and I'm down to one in this case. I'm going to mark that down. Now, there is consequences to this, and the consequences is that you need compassion to talk or convince people to join you. So, in our case, obviously, the Misukun, uh, the possible ally, the dead face uh, possible ally, we will, we, although we have saved him, uh, it doesn't mean that he automatically becomes an ally, so we need, still need to convince him before he becomes one. And what we need to do is again do a uh, test. This time, uh, again, we will be the white dice, there will be the black dice. And what we need to do is make sure that we have a higher uh, white dice to defeat him. Uh, and I can add the bonus from the compassion to the white dice. So let's see what we go. Okay, so it is a tie. So uh, basically, we'll have to roll again. Uh, so the first round of talking, he's not convinced. Let's go continue. Ooh. Ah, okay, that's fine. So even though it's still a tie, uh, because we get one bonus from my compassion, then I still have one compassion, so we are actually higher than uh, Kusun, uh, uh, Kusukun, uh, Misukun, sorry. <laughs> Uh, so in this case, uh, he became an ally. So he's now a fighter that will fight for us. And this is actually a good time because uh, although we only have a little bit of uh, information, so he's a dead face fighter, uh, but we don't know his technique because uh, he will try to basically uh, fight our enemies before us. So uh, we need to know what techniques he is using. So again, we roll on the techniques table. 
So let's see what we have. So a four. So Masukun actually used a Nikin uh, Ichi reel, which uh, if you look at this, is actually you using two swords. Um, and the bonus that he will get is that he has one plus fight and block three. So, so basically he's uh, he's kind of like a, a tanky area. I'm oh, sorry, a, a tanky character. So hopefully he will die that easily. Um, and uh, we will see how it goes. Um, now, obviously, this is the point where uh, as a role-playing game, you can also roll additional details like his family, um, like if there's any scars on him, or maybe even any recurring nightmare, because ultimately it is the same character creation table, so you can all do this uh, to our allies and see you know, if they are actually having the same, same kind of issues that we have, but I'm not going to do that for this purposes, because I think it's uh, more organic, the more we talked to uh, Misu, uh, Mikusun, uh, the more we know about his background rather than knowing everything from the start. And the funny thing is, if our character, uh, Kentaro, dies during our journey, we can play as uh, Misukun, uh, because you can simply play as your, uh, your allies uh, in this game. So, that's the first journey. Uh, we get ourselves as an ally, uh, although we lose this one compassion. So let's continue. Uh, so again, we are back to the um, the journey. So again, we'll see what journey we have. Three. If you have a reputation of six or more, villain, uh, a villain has found you. If not, roll on a road encounter. And you can see this is where I mentioned that. Uh, the more, the higher reputation you get, the easier you will be able to be uh, encountering a villain. So, at the moment, we, our reputation is still zero, so we're not going to face one anytime soon. So, roll encounter, which is going to be thirteen. So, roll a table one and a three. So a one or three is you were surrounded by three thugs, uh, which has a fight of zero and a block of zero with clubs. Okay, so they're basically really simple thugs, but there are three of them. And uh, because we, we have our ally, uh, Misukun, so instead of us fighting him, uh, us fighting these thugs, uh, Misukun is going to actually help us fight this. So, um, so in this case, it's pretty straightforward. It's still the same. Instead of using our stat, we're going to use his stat, which is a plus one in fight, and he has three blocks. So the first one, let's see. Five and five. So um, that is the first thug defeated. And the second one. Oh, this is a... Uh, so <laughs> Misukun uh, took a hit, uh, a club to the head. Uh, um, while he's fighting this the second thug, uh, but the good thing is he uh, he has three blocks, but now it's down to two. So we'll see if he continues to uh, roll badly. Uh, so it's going to continue. This is five and three. So he defeated the second thug, and what about the third thug? Ah, he also decided uh, that he can defeat the third thug as well. So. So Misukun um, actually defeated the three thugs uh, on our behalf, and uh, he's off to his uh, his own way. So he's gone, um, at least for now. So hopefully we'll see him later on. Um, so after that, we are going to a location, which means that we have reached a kind of like a like a village and so forth. So we'll see what it is. So we roll on that location uh, location table. Three, so three will be another port city. So um, now we can again do uh, a uh, urban encounter or take a shelter. I am going to take a shelter this time because determination is good. Uh, it's literally your luck in your uh, other uh, board games that allows you to roll, re-roll your dice. 
Uh, and we're back to the journey. One. So one is roll for a road encounter. So again, we go to the road and the counter table and see what we get. Four and a three. You're walking down the road when you encounter the wild ti uh, tiger. Fight plus zero, block plus three, and attacking a family. You can choose to ignore, uh, but I will lose one compassion, which I'm already down to one. Uh, <laughs> not not good. So uh, I guess I will intervene, I hope, uh, but it means that I will need to fight a tiger. Uh, hopefully I'm going to prevail. So, uh, so let's fight a tiger. Uh, I have a plus two in my fight in block two, and Tiger has zero uh, fight and uh, three blocks. So the first row, I succeeded, so the Tiger is now down to two blocks. I'm going to do it again. Uh, although this is a tie because we have plus two, so again, another hit to the Tiger. Hopefully one more hit. And it is still one more hit because um, I'm going to plus two to mine, so I've got a three. So I succeeded in uh, defeating the tiger. Uh, so there's no written rewards in this table over here. So you can see this is uh, just basically saying that you defeated the tiger. Uh, I didn't lose any compassion because I saved that family, but there's no additional reward to it. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this uh, table to start asking questions because this is a little table that allows you to uh, kind of create more stories during your gameplay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to this family and I'm going to ask them if they know of anything about the Ozushi family. Remember those are the, the clan that destroyed our our own clan and that's how we became the uh, the ronin in our original stories so i'm gonna roll a d6 to see what happens if this family knows anything about this uh clan so a two you don't find what you were looking for and end up drawing a lot of at, uh, attention uh, at one reputation oh, i didn't want the reputation but apparently Saving a family attacked by tigers and also asking them the wrong questions, which is asking them about this clan, draws a bit of attention. So they probably this family, once they get back to their own villages or their own city, they start telling people that, oh, there's a Ronin um, that wears a mask. Uh, his name is Kentaro. He's actually looking uh, for information about Osushi. And this is... Uh, someone who's dangerous because he can defeat a wild tiger without uh, any trouble. Okay, so we've drawn some attention to ourselves just by helping someone. That's not good, but let's continue. So uh, we are again back to the uh, location, I think. So we are going to uh, a location to see where we are. Oops, sorry. A five. So this time is going to be you have arrived in a town. If you have a reputation of five or more, you will be approached by two soldiers, which we didn't have, we only have one. Here you gain one reputation and have an urban encounter. Okay, without even doing anything, we get another reputation. So we are now up to two reputations, um, probably because of that family, because they already told people and by the time we arrived, they notice our mask and they said, hey, look, that's the guy who defeated the, uh, the tiger. And, uh, you know, words goes around. Um, so let's look at the urban encounter that we, we see in this city. Four and a three. So four and three is going to be, you have visited a shop or ink owned by a possible ally. So, okay, it's time to generate another ally. Uh, a shop or an ink. So let's see the possible, let's see the occupation first. So it's a three, which is an other fighter. 
There's another fighter who owns a shop or an ink. So obviously we need to rest. That's probably why we stumble upon his ink. And let's see the name. So I'm gonna see what is the gender by rolling a one, uh, just one to three will be male, uh, four to six will be a female. So let's see. It's a male, another male. Fighter, what's his name? Six and one. So this will be uh, uh, Tadashi. Tadashi. Tadashi is another fighter that we are going to encounter. So um, I guess we'll have a conversation with him um, and see if he can become a possible ally. First of all, uh, we are, we are only have the compassion of one, but we'll try to uh, to talk to him. So we'll see. Which is a tie because four plus one uh, is five. Okay, this is another tie, but we have uh, succeeded in uh, talking Tatashi into a. Uh, uh, a pot, a, an, an ally basically becomes someone that who will help us in the future. So it's about time that we talk, see a bit more about uh, Tadashi, what he looks like. So appearance six and a five, and that will be uh, athletic. And also, we need to roll again two and one. He's both. Athletic and has a deformed face. Okay, uh, a deformed face, and but he's uh, athletic. And I think it's a good time to see what kind of technique he poses. So uh, let's roll on this one. So there's a four, which means. Uh, Okay, another Nichen Ichi Ryo. So again, the ones that has two swords. So um, I think it's a good time that I ask him if he knows anything about uh, Mikunshin, uh, Misukun, which is our previous ally. Uh, maybe see if he knows anything about him, where he went, uh, if he's okay uh, or not. So uh, again, I will use the search for something table for it. So D6. Uh, six. Yes, I find what I were looking for. Uh, but before you have to face an enemy, which is a plus two fight and a block of one. Huh. Okay, so simply by asking uh, Misukun, I need to have a fight possibly because Remember, he defeated some fox before, so he probably made some reputation of himself as well. So let's fight this enemy of plus two fight and one block. So six, so I easily uh, defeated the enemy. So I didn't defeat it. I, uh, I took off his block, so he blocked his mind once. So next time if I hit him, then he will be gone. Okay, I hit him again, so he is defeated. Now, again, we're back to that uh, start, so we can decide it to uh, just kill this enemy or we can let him go. Um, I don't want to take away the compassion, uh, so I guess we'll just take the reputation increase. So we are now reputation of three, so uh, we're getting closer to the first villain, I guess. Uh, but yeah, so uh, we know a bit more about uh, Misukun, so I guess he's all right. Um, he made a reputation of himself. Uh, he's starting to you know, become famous like us, but you know. So I'm going to stop the story here because I think you kind of get the uh, idea of what this game is about. Um, ultimately, this is a game that is similar to the ones like uh, 4 Against Darkness or D100 uh, Dungeon, but at the same time, there's a lot more room for you to create your own stories to form the characters that you are and also the people that you met and you know, join to the dots together um, as the authors uh, described, stitching the stories together 
to, to, to form basically a, a stories for yourself. And I think this is one great example how you can use some simple game mechanics. So the fighting system is simple, but at the same time creates quite a bit of stories, a thematic sense of, you know, a, a highly lethal uh, fight uh, between samurais where, you know, people always just takes one hit to, uh, to, to defeat your enemy, kind of like a, a cowboy duel. You know, you just need one bullet and, and that's it. Uh, but this is a great game because um, there's lots of replayability. There's a kind of a roguelike feeling to it as well because if you are defeated, you can actually play as your um, your allies that you have uh, you have made during your 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 journey. Uh, so you can continue the same story. You can revenge your previous character as well. Um, I think this is an excellent game. Now, um, there is one problem, obviously, is the, uh, is the theme. So, if you're not into the uh, anime style uh, graphics, then, uh, then you're probably, you will be slightly troubled by this book. Um, and obviously, this is a, a fictional Japan, so it's definitely not based on the real life uh, history. This is definitely a fictionalized world, um, uh, so it's almost like a uh, a weird uh, East kind of uh, a story. Uh, so I wouldn't take it too seriously, uh, <laughs> uh, and um, it's, it's unfortunately because obviously some of the names and some of the uh, the, the names of the techniques or the characters. Uh, it's hard to translate them into English. I think this game is written in Portuguese originally as well, so it's going through two layers of trans translation. So, is you know, it's the, it's the author's interpretation of Japan, Feudal Japan, and then is then translated to English. But ultimately, I think it's a really nice game. Uh, it is short enough that you can play in uh, in thirty minutes. The rules are simple. There's a lot of replayability, and there is a lot of room for interpreting your own stories as well, which is the most important part in a solo role playing game. Um, and on top of that, you don't need to write any journals. Uh, all you need is to you know, just track on your uh, character sheets. So some of the key information will basically be um, the allies that you face, you know, the, the noble clans that you will meet or clash um, during your journey, your villains, maybe your enemies as well. And that's enough for you to tell a great story. Uh, no need for writing paragraphs over paragraphs. So hopefully you will enjoy this game. I will talk to you next time. Bye bye.